Rakanishu, Lord of the Fallen, is a particularly brutal fallen, feared and perhaps even respected among his own kind. Driving his minions into a frenzy, and perhaps more peculiarly, the droves of fallen encountered in Diablo 2 can often be heard screaming his name as they rush headlong to their deaths. But what makes this particular fallen so special to his kind? Are there any other fallen so revered? And where did his name first originate? The answer is so shocking that I had to go to the original developers for confirmation. But first, to ask and answer all of these questions, we need to go back to the beginning of the fallen themselves. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. The first time you encounter a fallen was the imp variant in Diablo 1, and it's one of the first enemies to appear in the labyrinth under the cathedral. And I was somewhat delighted to learn that they had a propensity to attack in packs, but if you killed one of their brethren, they would flee until regaining enough courage to regroup and attack again, showing a defining personality of sorts, an amusing cowardice that enriched the gameplay experience. But later I found that this was not always the case for the Fallen. We later learn in Diablo 3, the Fallen Ones, aka the Fallen, and formerly known as Namus Improbus, are a race of demons that had once been under the servitude of Asmodan himself, and seen in the Wrath cinematics were of much larger stature. However, they were unfortunately caught up in the warring between the greater evil Asmodan and his brother the primeval Diablo, which apparently turned out the worst for the Fallen in particular. According to a journal entry by Abd al-Hazir, It seems that the Fallen are indeed creatures of demonic origin. The old Haradric tale claims they were once powerful servants of the mythical Asmodan. They purportedly aided him in his battle against the prime evils, and Diablo later punished them by twisting them into the small, stupid forms they now possess. But not me. I defy you. Beware, foul demons and beasts. So the original Fallen are now cursed to walk Sanctuary in their current form. It was in Diablo 2 that I was taken aback when first encountering these Fallen. Gone were their dark colours and hiding in the shadows of the Cathedral in Tristram, and now they, as the first demon type to be encountered in the game by the player, were out in the open and distinguished by hues of reds and other various shades, now denoting a plethora of different variants to be encountered. A new addition was their now infamous shaman, making sure death would give the many fallen no respite, as he endlessly resurrected them as they fell to the heroes of Diablo 2. Though the champions are larger and the lunatics more devastating, it is the shaman priests who lead the fallen. These shrunken, unintimidating demons can easily kill an enemy with their firebolts, but it is their ability to resurrect their imp allies that allows them to command such high respect from their peers. However, still remained from the original Diablo was their cowardly persona. They will often scatter and run if one of their own is slain, but return to fight again if stopped by any obstacle. <laughs> They don't just squawk unintelligible cries like Diablo 1 now either. <laughs> they would instead bark a singular word. The fallen carvers, although somewhat muffled, would utter the word Rakanishu. But why? Well, inevitably, you happen by one Rakanishu, a super unique carver found in the stony field as a part of the main quest. He's next to the can stones that activate the portal to Tristram during the search for Cain. 
When attacking Rakanishu, melee heroes of course should be cautious of his lightning enchanted status, which causes Charge Bolt to emanate from him when struck. Rapid attacks on Rakanishu will result in an equally rapid release of Charged Bolts, which are especially deadly on higher difficulty levels. Usually, Rakanishu is the first monster encountered to possess the lightning enchanted trait in Diablo 2, and he will appear with 8 minions in Normal, 9 minions in Nightmare, and 10 minions in Hell, and naturally becomes exponentially more difficult depending on the mode you face him in. After felling Rakanishu, there are no real answers in game as to why the Fallen utter his name as a sort of battle cry, why they continue doing it throughout the game, and what significance he had, if any, to his Fallen brethren, until Diablo 3. Rakanishu makes an appearance in Diablo 3's second act, the Shrine of Rakanishu, and appears in the Dalgur Oasis. The Nephilim must interrupt a ritual involving five standing stones, which is likely a reference to the Can Stones, and then battle the avatar of Rakanishu. Which, notably, Rakanishu is seen in Diablo 3 with the title shown under the avatar's life displayed as a fallen demigod. How Rakanishu claimed this demigod status is still unknown, but other monsters of the fallen type are often heard not only muttering the name of Rakanishu, but their shaman types call out to Kalenzo and Bishibosh. They appear to also be important figures in their culture. Surprisingly, according to the wiki, Kalenzo was named after longtime Blizzard employee Karen Kalenzo. But nothing official is put out on Bishibosh. But what about Rakanishu? Well, during my investigation, I happened to ponder a rather strange claim online. On StackExchange.com, one user said, One of my friends was a senior programmer for D2, and I asked him the same question one day. Where the hell did you guys get the name Rakanishu? He said that one day in the office, another employee sneezed, and it came out sounding like Rakanishu. They liked it and made it part of the game. So... It really doesn't mean anything, just a silly inside joke. Of course, offhand, I thought that is a claim that is so outlandish it has to be either total BS or a 1% chance it's actually true. The old, unverified, I know a guy and here's a story that sounds kind of plausible. Of course, the user then gets pummeled online and starts spewing out names, one of which was Ted Bisson. For some reason, it really stuck with me and started to eat at me. Could this be true? It does kind of sound like a sneeze. So I reached out to some former Blizzard North employees, one of which being David Brevik himself via Twitter, ex-co-founder and president of Blizzard North. After sending him the screenshot of the infamous sneeze claim, he actually responded and said the following. I believe that's correct, which is kind of mind blowing, but again, it does make sense. I can only assume that an incredibly distinct sneeze happened in the office and inspired a Diablo character, which is stranger than fiction and a little bit mind blowing. I can only assume how incredible this sneeze must have been that the whole office must have stopped and said, we need to put that in our game and inspired an actual character in Diablo series. Not just a Diablo character, by the way, but one with further reach than the original franchise. Yes, Rakanishu's popularity is so vast, it wasn't just contained to the Diablo series. A good example is Ranishu from the Warcraft franchise, which are likely named after Rakanishu. And to add even more clarity, they are lightning themed creatures. Rakanishu versus Marae! In the Kobolds and Catacombs expansion, there is a dungeon boss Kobold carrying a lamp on his head and instead of the usual candle. When activated, it occasionally shows the text Rakanishu. In the Dalaran Heist expansion, the Fire Elemental Rakanishu is now a playable character unlocked with the first week of the adventure representing the mage class. He yells Rakanishu when attacking with a weapon. I'm what you call a criminal element. Outside of Blizzard, in the game Borderlands, there is a giant rack, a creature not unlike a pterodactyl, called Rakanishu. 
it will always drop the shield cracked sash, named after the common belt in Diablo 2. And to end things on a super fun fact, it would take 195,582,515 fallen kills to level a character to level 99. Assuming one fallen is killed per second, it would take 6 years, 2 months and 13 days to reach level 99. That's it for the bizarre tale of Rakanishu. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was full of cool tidbits and I enjoyed making the video, but if there are any other characters you'd like to explore, please, I'd love to know in the comments below. But until next time, Traveler.